afternoon. I'm your host, Amon Hawkins, and welcome to another edition of The Foresight, powered by UVA Community Credit Union. Well, I'm sorry, presented by UVA Community Credit Union and powered by Keswick. I'm so hyped up about this week, I almost skipped through the sponsor. So you know, you better get your seatbelt and your popcorn ready, especially with the guests I have on tap today. So before we get started, because I got to backtrack, I'm that excited. We took a loss. We're trying to get back on track. I'm trying to get you guys back on track, I'm trying to get you guys to engage, engage more. That means on Twitter, on Facebook, make sure you help us identify all the folks on the fourth side, how important it is to be a part of the fourth side of the UVA football team, because your side is the side that's ready to ride each and every week. Again, make sure you engage in what we're doing on the fourth side, get into the chats, I can see your messages coming in loud. The producers do a great job. Brandon Johnson said he is fired up on Facebook. Salute to Brandon Johnson. And also, if you want some swag, use them thumbs because you can get some free swag. All you have to do is type. Can you imagine? You don't even have to go fill out a raffle. You can just use your thumbs. I see your message. We get your name. You get some free Nike swag. So that's what the fourth side, that's what we do. And speaking of that, we got to recap last week's game and before i get into you know my thoughts of last week's game versus nc state i thought we would start it off and hear what the boss man has to say coach bronco Menahal, when discussing nc state and moving forward lots to correct from our our last game and after uh our opener and our game against clemson a lot of positive momentum and um a really optimistic and momentum generating beginning to the season with um, a lot to build for and uh, quite frankly a surprise and and uh, I was not happy and disappointed with our performance uh, on Saturday. He was disappointed and uh, wasn't happy with the performance and a lot of times as a player that's the one phrase you don't want to hear your head coach say that they're disappointed in your effort and, and how you played and um, I know these guys were right the ship. The main thing is we got to make sure meteorologists are around and get some type of uh, spiritual weather controller. Just make sure the rain stays away from us because the rain gives us a tough time. But with that being said, we did have a bright spot. Uh, Lindell Stone stepped in and I think did an exceptional job of moving the Cavalier offense and provided that energy, providing points, and helping us be competitive. As you can see, he was 30 of 54, 240 yards, three touchdowns to just one interception. The biggest thing that jumped out to me about Lindell Stone was his ability to identify coverage. He's mastered the playbook, so he, he demonstrated that with his quick release, as you see, getting the ball out, being very decisive in his throws, and then getting into his playmakers, not trying to do too much, understanding that he's more of a pocket passer, he's an accurate guy, and getting to the, to the playmakers that we have on the outside, so... Salute to Lindell Stone, who the players say he's basically a coach that's still in pad. So salute to him. Um, in a losing effort, you always want to make sure you point out the bright spots, and that's not an easy spot. Uh, we always say the backup quarterback is the most popular player uh, on the team as far as the fans, but it's a, tough, it's a difficult job because you have limited reps, and you have to come in, you have to produce. And um, I think he did that. So salute to Lindell Stone. Going into this game, we still have some uncertainty. With uh, Brendan Armstrong uh, with his concussion and the protocol. The main thing is uh, Stone will be ready. Uh, and Wake Forest has to prepare for two different styles of quarterbacks. You have the throwback back and Brendan Armstrong. You have your classic drop back, uh, quick release quarterback, and Lindell Stone. So they got they, they got their hands full. And don't, and don't forget about Thompson. Don't forget about Armstead. They're still in the mix as well. They've been playing some receiver, being the ultimate team players. But – Wake Forest definitely has to prepare for more, and that could be to our advantage as well. So, you know, looking forward to see what Coach and I would do versus that Demon Deacons defense on this Saturday. Um, I guess when we come comes back, definitely knows about the tobacco road very well. So you don't want to miss who we got on tap as a guest this week, and we'll go into our first break. You'll find we have a way about us. It comes from being unafraid of the hard things, never losing sight of the little things. 
And when all is said and done, coming together to enjoy the good days. Because every inch, every number, every call, we earn for the salt of the coast, for the stones of the capital, for the hug of Skyline Drive, for all Virginia. To the fourth side, I'm your host, Amal Hawkins. Always enjoy that commercial because everything we get, we earn. And speaking of earning, I got somebody that's a guest that definitely earned everything that he has achieved in his career, both on the field and off the field. Here's a guy that when he came in, looked like a basketball player, and when he left, redefined the way that a defensive end looks at in the 3-4. And I'm talking about none other than I, I, I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna call him Chris Canty for right now. I'm not gonna say what we call him in the locker room just yet. I'm gonna keep it professional. <laughs> I know you're busy, man. I'm glad you came on the fourth side. The fans are definitely glad that you're here. But before we get started, we gotta recap what you did at UVA. All ACC selection, all academic, all academic. You a student athlete. You was a studious athlete here. At the University of Virginia, man. African-American studies degree. Fourth round pick of the Dallas Cowboys in the 2005 draft. Take take me back, man. How about them Cowboys draft? You? What, what was that feeling like? Man, draft day was a disappointing time for me. Um, I know a lot of people celebrated, but for me, I thought I would be a first round pick mm. or an early second round pick. But, you know, I had the injuries coming out of college. I had the dislocated knee. Then I had to detach retina from the incident out in Arizona. So there was a lot on the medical side that left red flags for teams. So I, I dropped in the draft. And, 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 you know, when you start comparing it to where I thought I was going to go after my junior season on the field. Um, but it gave me an opportunity to be a part of an awesome draft class, man. I came mm -hmm. in with DeMarcus Ware and Marcus Spears and Kevin Burnett and Marion Barber and Jay Ratliff, who's one of my, my good friends to this day. So um, I had an opportunity to, to, to be a part of that class also having the opportunity to stay in the Bill Parcells family, being drafted by Parcells, but playing the previous four years under Al Grove mm -hmm. and running the same system at Dallas that we ran at UVA. So I'm coming in, and that was the first year that Bill was transitioning that Cowboys team from the 43 defense to the 34 defense. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the meeting rooms with Mike Zimmer <laughs> teaching Leroy Glover and Greg Ellis and all of those guys about how the front seven is supposed to operate in stack wow. defense. So, I mean, that was, it was, it ended up being a blessing in disguise, ball hog. So I, I say all that to say this, man, it was a tremendous opportunity to be at UVA and to have the kind of coaching that I got. Cause it really set the stage for my pro career. Like I, I don't think I play 11 years in the national football league, unless I have an opportunity to be around the staff mm -hmm. at UVA at the time. Yeah. And I think you make, you, you, you made a great statement, you know, playing it where I, with an Al Groves defense then being like being happy but disappointed at the same time because you're a competitor you understood still what you brought to the table the work you put mm -hmm. in your size at the position that you played so those dynamics had you understanding that I'm a first round talent and they got a still in the fourth round and it and it showed because like you said when you stepped on the scene you knew that defense and yeah. I'm pretty sure Al called Bill was like oh yeah you got you a still when you see him in <laughs> oh, person yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So may, can you talk about being your size and, you know, six, seven, being agile? Because when you first got here, you was like a basketball player. And to yeah. me, a lot of folks think that's a diss, but that's actually an attribute because of your lateral quickness, your agility and how athletic that you was. But once you grew into that frame with your strength, being able to play on the outside, and then when you went to the Jets, you played on the inside. Man, talk about just being that versatile within the 3-4 defense. Well, Ball Hawk, before we even get into that, please just, I want to correct you on one thing. Never okay. played for the Jets, played for the Giants. Oh, I said the Jets. The Ooh, I, I'm the thinking Jets, about Le'Veon Bell, I'm sorry. I don't want to be associated in any see way, that? shape, or form with that disaster. You see how I tried to get you, though? I tried to get I you. I see what you're trying to do. I just had to make <laughs> that's sure. For, that's for, that's, for, that's for telling on me. Yeah, that's for, for telling on me. people back home. So I just wanted to straighten that out. But, yeah, that's for um, telling on me. Mm -hmm. But no, man, it was, um, you know, the more you can do, that's what we say in the National Football League, the more you can do. If you have versatility to your game mm -hmm. as a defensive lineman, if you can play out on the edge and you can kick down to the interior in sub packages, that presents a lot of value. So for me, it was all about trying to put as many tools in the tool bag as I possibly could because I wanted to extend my career as okay. long as it could possibly last. So, the, the, you know, when coaches 
you know, ask, you know, whether or not you're comfortable with something. I'll always say I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with that, coach. Even if I wasn't, I was going to be okay with it because the NFL man. checks was real nice. So I just figured, you know what, even if I'm not comfortable, it's an opportunity for me to learn. Just look at every every adverse situation as a challenge, as something that can make you better. And I think if you have that kind of mindset, you're going to uh -huh. do yourself a lot, of, a lot of favors in terms of setting yourself up for success. I agree with you. And we got a we got a question for the fan. The fans asked me to ask you uh, about the big guys that Bronco recruits: Snowden, Swoboda, Taylor. So Snowden's like six seven, Taylor six five, Swoboda six foot ten. Talk yeah. about playing as a a taller guy. Something I know. Well, as a know taller about. guy, you always got to be cognizant of your pad level, making sure mm -hmm. that you maintain leverage. You got long leverage. You got long arms. So that's always a blessing on the football field, but you got to know how to use them. And mm -hmm. so for me, it's about teaching young linemen hand placement, making mm -hmm. sure you get your hands inside, making sure you have the proper kind of body lean. Also understanding the difference between being a waist bender versus a knee bender. Mm -hmm. You want to bend from the knees. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to bend over because if you bend over, you lose, you lose a balance. And if you got a, yeah. if you got a tall guy, that doesn't have good balance, especially good contact balance, you're going to get exposed when you play against better competition. So those are all things that you have to keep in mind when you're talking about guys that have those tall frames. Now, as far as Snowden goes, I, I would have thought we would have seen him put on a little more weight from last yeah. year to this year. But, okay. um, but that's just one of the things that I see with him, making sure that he concentrates on his body lean because he's got a lot of potential that he hadn't tapped into yet. And mm -hmm. if he learns how to use his body lean and the length in his arms, I mean, he's going to be he's going to be a tough guy to stop on the edge. Yeah, I definitely agree to it. And Chris, we forgot to bring it all back. What made you you what made you choose the University of Virginia? Because we know you're familiar with the tobacco roll area. What, what yeah. was about UVA? Well, UVA was recruiting me. You know, my mom always says you got to want who wants you. That's not only in Dayton, but that's just, you know, in general, when it comes to business or when it comes to schools that are looking at you. And the only two ACC schools that were really interested in me were mm -hmm. Boston College and UVA. Now, NC State flirted with me a little bit, but they ultimately didn't, didn't bring no paperwork. So uh, for me, it became an easy decision. You know, at the time my family was in Charlotte, it made sense to try to stay within driving distance of home. And mm -hmm. UVA was a great school. George Welsh recruited me, rolled out the red carpet, even though it was officially after the signing day. Um, but he let me know that there would be an opportunity for me. But even beyond what would happen with my football career, he, he made sure that I understood that I was going to have a chance to get a first-class education, a degree that's second to none, and they were going to make sure that they did everything that they could mm -hmm. to develop the young man into a grown man. And, and I appreciated that kind of transparency. Like his, his, his goal, first and foremost, wasn't necessarily about winning games. It was just about making sure that he matured the kid that he saw in front of him to make sure that I was ready to go out in the real world after I came through his program. Agree, man. And rest in paradise to Coach George Welsh, man. It means so much to myself. And I know, like you just said, it means so much to you because he cared about us as as people, as men, making us better mm -hmm. men. Not saying other coaches don't do that, but that's what made him so special. And, you know, my right. last question before we go into break, um, well, I got two things. First of all, Defeating the Patriots in the Super Bowl. <laughs> you won a Super Bowl. That's not, yeah. that's not, I like, that's not, a, that's a huge thing. Cause to me, that's the hardest championship to win in sports is, a, you know, football. Hold on, Hawk. Can you see the trophy up here? Can you see the trophy up there? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Sean again. Yeah. You, you see the trophy? Hold on. Uh -huh. let, 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 no, no, go get it. I want to see close up. I want to see close up. Yeah. Let, it, it's rare. Let's we'll... let go ahead and break this out. Let's go yeah, ahead and it's, break this it's out. It's rare. There we go. Let, let, let's sit there right here. Let's sit there right here. Ooh, wee. Ooh, baby. Baby, Mwah. love that thing right there. Came from that UVA. That That's what coach. UVA do. There you go. Hey, it, it only weighs about ten pounds, but it takes fifty-three men to hold it up. There you go. And so yeah. you can do all you want to do in there the regular season. Just get to the postseason, and and you, there there's is. a whole new season. There it is. But what was that feeling like, brother? What was that feeling like, man? Um, you know, it's indescribable, man. I, I don't have words to express it man it's it's pure joy like i know a lot of guys you know compare it to their children being born i don't have any kids yet but they compare mm -hmm. it to that type of feeling like it's just it's it's the validation for all the work that you put in all of the dreams that you have 
as as a young man coming up in the sport. Like everybody dreams about winning the Super Bowl. And then what do you mm-hmm. say after you win the Super Bowl, Hawk? What do you say? Say I'm, I'm going, going to Disney, Disney World, right? Yeah, Disney every, World, every, every kid yeah. dreams about that. Like I win the Super Bowl, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to Disney World. Like that that was it, you know, that's that's the thing, man. Just to have the confetti fall down on you and just uh the parade a couple of days later in New York mm-hmm. City through the Canyon of Heroes. I want to say there were three million people, ball hawk, at the parade that we had in 2012 um, to celebrate that championship. Three million people. It was a sea of people. You look down the avenues, down the streets, as far as the eye could see, it was nothing but people lining oh, the streets in New York City. When, when did you finally man. go to sleep? How, how long after the game did you finally go to sleep? Nah, man, I'm going to tell you something. I, I got it in for the next four or five days after the game. My and I God. knew I had to. I had to cram in all of that celebrating because I had to have a couple of surgeries. Like, I had to oh, have okay. another eye surgery. I had to have another knee surgery. So it was like, yo, I got to get all of my celebrating in. Like, I'm going to see Jay-Z at Carnegie Hall with my Ooh, tuxedo on. Like, we're doing tough. everything that we could possibly do before I got to shut it down and have these surgeries. So that, that week after the Super Bowl, man, I – I tell you, I didn't get much sleep at all. I mean, you're talking about you know, a couple of hours a night, and we you back. You know what's it. playing in my head right now is Christopher Williams. Don't don't wake me. I'm dreaming. Don't oh, wake yeah. me. <laughs> That's I'm that New dreaming. Jack City soundtrack. I see you, ball hawk. <laughs> I see you. Hey, man. And also for the fans who don't know, I'm a huge fan of Chris Canty because he goes on first things first, and he rivals Nick Wright who I got a lot of respect for. And, man, you hold your own because there's not too many people that can stand in front of that dude. That dude <laughs> is special. He he is he is definitely a special talent in what he do, especially with LeBron James. Uh, but talk about your, your media career, man, how you transition into that. And I think you're, you know, very exceptional in what you do. Man, I'm, listen, I'm blessed, man. I had the opportunity to jump in the media when I got done. I started out as a weekend radio guy at 98.7 ESPN in New York and graduated to a weekday host on DCR from Mm -hmm. 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then from there was able to spin it off on linear platforms. So you mentioned the work I did on FS1 on First Mm -hmm. Things First. Shout out to my brother, Chris Carter, for looking out for me, giving me that opportunity, working Mm -hmm. with Nick Wright, one of my other brothers in the industry. Um, So it was good when I was over at Fox. But Ballhawk, I'm breaking a little bit of news on the fourth side, just signed a new contract with ESPN, not just with the radio side, but I'll be on the TV side as well, debuting real soon. So that's coming to the fans at home as well. We got exclusives on the fourth side, fans. Come on. <laughs> come on. We be all the big dogs. Man, we moving on up. Yes, to sir. The east yes, sir. Side. To the east side. I'm just trying to get my deluxe apartment in the store. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's hey. all I want. Hey, that's speaking of I that, want. you dropped the exclusives so the fans want to know. Since, you know, you're so in tune and, and you're in the sports world, how often are you able to watch the Wahoos play? Uh, you know what? I try to lock in as much as I can, man. I was a little bit disappointed in what I saw last Saturday against NC State. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I do, a, I do a pretty good job of keeping up with my team. Like, for those of the, of the UVA fans that follow me on Twitter, you know when I'm watching the game because I'm tweeting out, uh, a, mil- a million different different <laughs> things while I'm watching the game. Like, did they see this? Are they watching for that? Mm-hmm. But um, overall, I got to say this, man. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the direction that the program is going. We had a couple of lean years, but it seems like Bronco has got this thing pointed in the right direction. Now we just got to continue to build on the successes that we've had in the past couple of years. And the last point of that question before we go into break that Chris from Charlottesville had is uh, how – does this D-line stack up against the Who's during your playing days? I always love questions like that. We oh, can them. man. I mean, <laughs> I feel like that's such an unfair question just because you know, we had a lot of guys that played on Sundays in that front seven, man. We had a lot of guys. I mean, Ahmad Brooks, mm. Ty Parham had a cup of coffee with the Dallas man Cowboys. Child. Andrew Hoffman was with the Cleveland Browns. Mm-hmm. Brennan Schmidt was, was in the league for a time. I mean, Dennis mm-hmm. Haley was there. I mean, Ray, Ray Mann had an opportunity. Like, we had a lot of – Daryl Blackstock was – like, we Ooh. had a lot of guys that played in the National Football League. So, I feel like that, that's a really unfair question. Chris Long won a couple of Super Bowls. You know, he's on that defense Just line. Just like, a couple, you know. Just, yeah, you know, you know just like, they might know him. You know, he might yeah, be. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I don't even know that that's fair. <laughs> 
Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate that. And fans on Facebook are saying congratulations, Chris, on your recent contract. It's thank it's you, an outpour you, of love you. for All you, blessings, brother, man. man. And, All um, blessings. Yeah, and, and we got one more question for a break. They said, how does prep during game week for the Super Bowl differ from other weeks? I thought that was a great question. Um, well, see, I think the most important thing is that you get all of your install done before you travel to your Super Bowl site. So that was that was the benefit of being on that 2011 Giants team. Mm-hmm. You had a lot of core guys that were on that Super Bowl 42 team back in 2007 that had beat the undefeated Patriots. So yeah. those guys understood what the logistics of the two weeks leading to the big game should be. And I, I thought it was a great thing that Tom Coughlin did. Like those guys set the tone and said, listen, the parties after you win the Super Bowl are a lot better than the parties before the Super Bowl. So let's make sure we take care of our business, get our work in. We got all our install in before we went to Indy, which was where Super Bowl 46 was. And then once we got there, like, you know, you got to deal with your family getting situated and tickets mm-hmm. and all of that other stuff and people traveling to the site. So we tried to get all of that stuff out of the way early on in the week. So as we got closer to the game, we just lock in. And really, we could isolate ourselves and just be around each other. Yeah. Like a lot of guys didn't want to be around their families. They didn't want to be around anybody else that didn't have something to do with how we were going to win that game. And mm. I thought that was important. Like the, the mentality, it, it's different, man. The Super Bowl, you, you try to say it's just another game, but it's not. Yeah. And yeah. so you have to understand the nuances in terms of how you have to prepare in order to win the game. The sacrifices of today will amplify the glory of tomorrow. Coach Coffin was on it. He was on you it already the way know. he approached it and it showed on the field. So that's the end of this segment. Chris is going to stay with us for our Who's Picks. Got another break. This is the fourth side with Amaya Hawkins. Back to the fourth side is the Mile Hawkins with my special guest today, Chris Canty, former Wahoo great Super Bowl champion that didn't play for the Jets. He played for the Giants. <laughs> since he threw a shot at me, I try to size him up like we do in the locker room. And now a media figurehead, man, uh, just a great sports analyst who I love to listen to. And I'm not just saying this because he's my brother, but when I listen to him, it's so insightful. He gives you, you know, the best of both worlds and he stands on his own, man. He, he He's not playing just a side. So definitely glad he took time out to be on the fourth side to speak with you fans, and I'm glad you're enjoying him being on here. And next segment, I'm not good to this, Chris, but uh, maybe you could be better than me. Picking who's going to win a game. This is the ACC pick em segment. We'll All be right. focused on the ACC game. So first up, we got Clemson at Georgia Tech on ABC. This is a noon game. Who do you have winning down there in Hot Atlanta? I never won down there in Hot Atlanta, by the way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Atlanta was never, uh, never friendly to us. But uh, I listen. I got the Clemson Tigers in this one, man. I, I think this is thing. Trevor Lawrence going back home, Georgia mm-hmm. native. He's going to show out early and often. Um, and that Clemson offense, they've got another gear in comparison to the other offenses in the ACC. They could just turn it up a notch. We saw that a couple of weeks ago when our Cavaliers went down to Death Valley. So um, I look for Clemson to roll in this one big. It's a noon game. I I don't see Trevor Lawrence playing in the fourth quarter of that one. Yeah, I agree with you. Trevor Lawrence is playing at a high level. Hasn't thrown an interception in over a year. Travis Etienne is a special back. Very explosive. Defensive line, get after you. I know Georgia Tech is turning the the corner. Um, They had a great win over Louisville. A young freshman quarterback that's actually been keeping them afloat and making plays. But I see Clemson being too much in. You know, Chris, I'm just throw this out there. It looked like Atlanta trying to get Trevor to come back home for the Falcons, but I'll let you talk about that on your shows. Yeah. <laughs> they got competition with the Jets, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, 
We got Boston College at Virginia Tech. Y'all see how I make sure I stay before at Virginia Tech, 730, ABC, in Blacksburg. Who do you have winning this game and why, Chris? Ball Hawk, let me ask you this. Is it possible that both teams can lose? Nah, oh, okay. they could tie. They could tie, team. I guess. Oh, uh, I mean, I just, I, I, I don't, I don't want anybody to come out of this one with a win. But if I gotta pick one team, I'm going with Boston College. That's more a heart than my head type of pick, just because I don't like that, those guys that are in that that cow pasture in Blacksburg. Oh God, I gotta do it again. I did it last it's week. It's a lot of hate. It's a lot of hate, ball. I know, I, man. I, just don't I gotta rock keep with it. Them. I gotta keep it real, cause yeah. I mean, Matt Ryan not playing again. I got. I just like tech the way they're running the ball. I ain't gonna front. Okay. Their running right. back really impresses me. Hooker's playing again. I think he's their spiritual leader, the heart and soul. And when he's on the field, it's tough to beat them. And Tech was impressive the way they fought back last week down in Carolina. I was impressed by that. Yeah. So that's two weeks in the world and pick Virginia Tech. So people don't hold it against me. Y'all see the photo in the background. I know. I'm just being a professional. Okay, <laughs> uh, UNC at Florida State, seven thirty on ABC down there in Tallahassee. Who do you have, Mister Chris Canty? I got Carolina in this one, big man. And I know Virginia and UNC is the oldest rivalry in the South, but I <laughs> listen. This Carolina team is really impressive, man. The Howell kid that's mm-hmm. playing quarterback, he's just he's a little bit different. And I know yes. everybody thought that De'Ara King was the, the guy in the ACC after Trevor Lawrence. I really think it's this kid from Carolina. So I, I got the Carolina Tar Heels big against the Knowles this weekend. I agree with you, man. I think FSU is they're very discombobulated down there from the coaching staff to the players. I just think there's no real leadership and nobody's buying in to what the leadership is saying. UNC is hitting on all cylinders. Both backs got out there on the ground last week. Howell special. You got Daz Newsom from the 757 went to Hampton High School. Um, so I see UNC, like you said, winning quick, fast, in a hurry. And I don't think it's going to be close besides 0-0 at the kickoff. And lastly, we have our favorite team, the Wahoos, playing at 4 o'clock again on ACC Network versus Wake Forest. And this breakdown is brought to you by Red Diamond Coffee and Tea. Who's versus Wake Forest? We don't need to pick. We just got to break down how our team is going to defeat and get back on track versus Wake Forest. One of the things that you got to remember when you're going on the road, you pack your defense, you pack your running game, and I think that has to be the mentality for Broncos guys. I mean, with everything that's going on in the quarterback position, whether it's Stone, whether it's Armstrong, to me, that, that that's not necessarily going to be the focal point of what you're going to do offensively. You want to impose your will. You want to use that big physical offensive line to pound on that defensive front. And then you set up opportunities for chunk plays in the passing game through play action. That's kind of how I see their formula on offense. And then defensively, just make them one-dimensional. Make them Uh, one-dimensional. Do not allow them to extend drives. Don't make any mistakes. No offsides, no face masks, no personal fouls. Don't do them any favors in terms of giving them cheap first downs. Mm -hmm. Make them drive the length of the field. I don't think the Deacons can do it. So... I like Virginia in this game if they stick to the script, which is pack your defense, pack your running game, and use your your quarterbacks in the passing game as a complement to the overall physicality that the team wants to play with. Chris, man, I couldn't say it any better. Um, It starts up front. It starts with us, you know, being able to run the football, establishing that mindset. Mm -hmm. When we was playing Wake Forest, you know, like you said, it was a stat game, but this is the great thing about our job. We don't have to worry about backing up what we say. And I can hear Coach <laughs> Wolf right now saying, Christ, Chris, you can't say that. You can't say it's a stat game. Come on. We got to stay focused. They're going to use it. See that bulletin board? It's going to be up there. Chris Canty said it's a stat game. Now, we'll say this. I hope the Wahoos were able to see bulletin board material in which a Wake Forest offensive lineman stated that the defensive line of UVA it's a favorable blocking matchup for them that mm. they can see themselves running the ball mm. versus UVA. That's mm. all I got to say. Wow. Wow. Anytime an offensive lineman comes out and says that, you know, offensive linemen yeah. they don't talk at all. So uh-uh. when an offensive lineman comes out and says that in the it media, from here. that means he's got no respect going None. against you as a D lineman. So, so that I mean, means- I, you know, listen, you hope the guys, you heard, you hope they heard those words and then they take on that challenge, man. But again, it comes back to this mentality, man. When you're going on the road, 
Those are the things you hang your hat on. It's mm-hmm. run game, it's defense, and then you use your offensive passing game. Use that passing game as a compliment to what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like I just, I'm a big believer in complimentary football and yes. Virginia has all the tools when it comes to this particular matchup to dictate the complexion of the game. And that's what they got to make sure that they do early on. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, man. I know the fans definitely appreciate you coming on the show, brother. I always tell all my guests, man, I love you as a brother. I want to give you your flowers while you're here. Definitely proud of all you have achieved, what you have set forth in the future. And I still remember when you came on my show, say, Ballhawk, stop trying to do it by yourself. Bring your boys <laughs> on. So I appreciate you, brother. And anything you want to say to the fans before you get out of here? Well, Ballhawk, thank you for having me on. I enjoy the show. And hopefully I'll be back on with you guys sometime soon in the near future. Oh, yeah, and congratulations, ESPN, Stephen A. Money, money, Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money, 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 money. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't see you. My God, right, man, bro. salute to you, bro. <laughs> All right, All right. four side, let's take another break before we come back to our keys to the game versus Wake Forest as we close. I do this for my goddaughter. For my mother. My family. For my grandma. Honey and Papa. For my parents. My grandma. She's never missed a home game. My team. My team. The community. Charlottesville. I do this for the world. I do this for UVA. I do this for you. Stop the spread. Wear a mask. Wahoo Back to the fourth side, I'm your host, Amal Hawkins. Definitely appreciate our special guest today, Super Bowl champion, Chris Canty for coming in and providing you guys exclusive exclusive news. I was going to say exclusive energy because he provided that too, but it's like exclusive news about his new deal with ESPN. We're definitely proud of him. And also we're still taking questions. Derek Nicholson asked me before the break, do you think Ronnie Walker would get any reps this week? First of all, NCAA, thank you for listening to our free has, hashtag free Ronnie Walker. Thank you very much. It's a free year. should have been free. But, hey, we were patient. Good thing come to those who wait. And, yes, I think he's going to get some reps because they've been making sure he's been prepared each and every week. They've been preparing like he's been available each and every week. He's a dynamic back. But before we get too excited, we just got to make sure we do what these keys to the game say. And today, these keys of the game are brought to you by Charlottesville Chevy. Yes, Charlottesville Chevy. I like that big body Chevy. Hey, Charlottesville Chevy. Ball hog like that big body Chevy in the photo. First of all, what we got to do, the keys to the game, no pressure. Um, we got to wake up early versus wait. Hmm, like that word play, right? Wake up early versus wait. What that mean? First of all, got to execute. How are we going to execute? No stupid penalties. Block the man you're supposed to block. Throw to the man you're supposed to throw to. Catch the ball. Run with the ball. Let's score early. Let's not get down. We got to break that goose egg in the first quarter. We have to score in the first quarter and get stops in the first quarter. Okay? Okay. Second of all, Havoc who's talking to you. 11-7. 7-11. Y'all going to – I know y'all going to wreak Havoc. People been waiting. They going to watch. You going to do your thing. Defensive line, I think you've been playing at a high level all year. Guys got to adjust to new roles. Hey, it took some time. We're going to create some havoc, create some turnovers. Because they offers a line said, y'all easily blocked. Y'all some Velcro. And last of all, keep your balance. We, uh, Dr. and I, I ain't trying to see 54 throws from Lindell Stone. Mm-mm. I ain't trying to do that to him. Mm-mm. He, I mean, we could be winning by a lot. I just don't want to see 54 throws. I want to see a lot of runs. I want to see the Samoan slasher. Do this, because when he do this, that means he scored the touchdown, okay? Samoan Slasher, Wayne Tyler Pop, I want to see this, okay? Then I want to see Shane Simpson catching some passes out the background. Then I want to know what he do when he score. Then I want to see Ronnie Walker run with the ball. Then I want to know what he do when he score, because I want to see a lot of lifting up by the linemen. If you know when the linemen lift up, that means somebody score. Receivers don't let you lift them up. Nah, we dance on our own. Running backs do. So those are my keys. Brought to you by Charlottesville Chevy. That was a nice truck y'all had, Charlottesville Chevy. I like it a lot. And also, anytime the four side is on and you want the free swag, how that blue looking today? That blue look good now, don't it? I remember how the blue. Okay, I ain't going to do that. Use your thumbs. You can win some free Nike swag, courtesy of the Who's, the four side. That's how we do. 
You can't get his his necklace that's around his neck or his hard hat, but we can get you some of this nice swag. Uh, but I definitely always appreciate you guys tuning in. Definitely always appreciate my guests, my super producers. Salute to them. And uh, that's all we got, man. Four side is always time to ride. Ball hawk, we out. Ha-ha! <laughs>